I'm going to show you how I'd stop letting anxiety finally ruin my sleep because I struggled with this for years of my life. And do you ever find yourself laying awake at night, just unable to stop your negative and anxious thoughts? And you just lie in bed, you're constantly tossing around and you start to grab your phone and you scroll a bit on social media. So you hope that you will get sleepy and then it's already 3 a.m. and you're like, fuck, I have to get up in four hours. And then you're even more stressed out, you know that the next day will suck because you didn't sleep enough. And then you go to work feeling sleep deprived and not really ready. And then you're so fucking tired, but you just can't seem to fall asleep. And every night for eight years of my life, it was exactly like that. I was even scared of going to bed because I knew I would just be tossing around and waiting and waiting two, three, four hours until I fall asleep. Sometimes even staying awake all night long until 5, 6 a.m. And then I look at the clock and I'm like, oh, I have to go to school in one hour. And it was just terrible, 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 terrible. But luckily I discovered a few strategies to finally reclaim my nights. And actually I'm feeling so much better. I was able to reduce my anxiety just because I slept better because your sleep is impacting your anxiety a lot. It's very important for your hormone regulation. And now I feel ready and refreshed to take on the day. I'm way more productive and overall less anxious and happier. So in this video, I will share the exact steps that I took to stop letting anxiety ruin my sleep. And this isn't about quick fixes or medication. Doing this takes a bit of time, like a week, two, three weeks to get used to the protocol. And it's about taking action. It's about using the practical tools that I will give you. Otherwise, you just wasted a bunch of your time by watching this video and not changing anything. And you want to have sustainable changes, right? So you can start implementing them actually tonight. I just imagine you go to bed tonight and you're already like 5% better at sleeping and falling asleep and staying asleep. That is already an improvement. And the best part, these methods are simple and can be easily incorporated into your nightly routine. And like I said, I always used to struggle with falling asleep at night, especially when I was dreading to go to school the next morning because I developed a generalized anxiety disorder when I was 10 years old because I got heavily bullied at school. So until I was like 15, so for five years of my life, I couldn't really sleep. You can see um, the huge eye bags under my eyes when I was like 12, 13 years old. I literally couldn't sleep. I, I just couldn't. I was just laying in, in bed at night, overthinking the next day if I get bullied again at school. What if I failed this exam? What if this happens or this happens or this happens, right? Like when you're overthinking, you constantly have these what ifs inside of your head. And my head was just like spinning until I literally got headaches. And I was just tossing around. And then I got frustrated because I couldn't fall asleep. And I was beating myself up for feeling this way and not being able to sleep, which just made my anxiety worse. And after some time I did fall asleep, it was already like midnight, 3 a.m. And I know that I can only sleep like three, four hours until I have to get up again. And then I wake up during that time as well. I wake up like one hour after I finally fell asleep. And then I'm just like, fuck this. I grab my phone, I scroll on social media, I watch porn, jerk off, and, you know, go, then go to school. And it, it was like that for years of my life. And maybe you can relate to this. So if you're a young, ambitious man, and you're actually watching this video and you want to take action and you want to improve your sleep and reduce your anxiety, this video is the right one for you. In fact, this channel is the right one for you. If you need some ADHD edits, some weird content, some, you know, like flashy sounds or something like that, you can click off. This is pure education for ambitious young men who want to reduce their anxiety. And if you need help applying these strategies, if you want to overcome your anxiety in 30 days, you can click on the first link in the description to book a free one-on-one -on -one call with me and we will see if you're the right fit for my program. But let's get into it. This is what we're going to cover. Sleep anxiety cycle, how to sleep despite anxiety, how to improve your sleep and how to stick to your routine. So the sleep anxiety cycle. This is the biggest problem that I found out because bad anxiety is making your sleep worse, but Bad sleep is making your anxiety worse. So it's just like a, like a spinning wheel that's getting worse and worse and worse and worse, right? So I can't fall asleep because I'm feeling anxious at night and have these negative thoughts about like work, school and the day ahead and I'm completely like shaking and I have pain inside of my chest and negative thoughts and I get a headache and I can't fall asleep, which is just making my anxiety worse. That is a big problem. So we have to fix the cycle. Otherwise, it just gets worse and worse and worse over time because bad sleep is infecting your anxiety on a very deep level it's um, increasing your body stress response right so you literally have increased cortisol levels and the sympathetic nervous system is very active because 
like sleep is regulating your hormones and you know like a bunch of processes go on in your body which are super important like sleep is one of the fundamentals that you have to fix if you want to reduce and overcome your anxiety sleep diet exercise sunlight mindfulness or inner work emotional regulation you have the impeccability to actually regulate your emotions that means you're like always on edge right like you go to work and a co-worker is saying something to you and you just snap at him it's just so much anxiety you just snap and you just scream you shout you say something bad and you, maybe you even hurt the ones that you love and it's it's not even your fault because you can't like your body is not regulating your emotions it just like all comes up like a like a wave crashing down increased irritability mood swings and heightened anxiety so you can literally go like <laughs> have you ever had this when you woke up in the morning and you felt like shit and then a couple of hours later you started feeling better and then you felt worse again and then you started feeling better again and just like this up and down up and down throughout the day which is very very exhausting for your body and your mind cognitive impairment it affects intention right you literally can't focus because it, during the night your body is processing everything that you've learned and it's connecting like new neurons and pathways inside of your brain and when you don't sleep enough you can't memorize what you've learned you can't be as productive and you may literally make worse decisions there was a study that found out if you sleep six hours a day six hours a day it's similar to being drunk that is that is crazy like six hours a day is a lot for normal people six hours is like what most people would i, I guess would um would be sleeping six hours a night but you should always aim for eight nine ten in fact i need like nine or ten hours a night to feel good the next day and refresh if you have six hours of sleep, it's literally similar to being a, like a bit drunk. That is that is crazy. You can look up the study. You also have hyperactivity of the amygdala. And amygdala is the thing inside of your brain that's triggering uh, stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. And it's also triggering the fight, flight, freeze response. So the fear center of the brain becomes more reactive. That means normal situations, right? Like you go to work and you're speaking to your coworker and he just says something and you just get a panic attack out of nowhere. Like there's like this minor problem and anxiety amplifies the problem and makes it this big thing that you can't overcome all because he didn't sleep well. It leads to heightened anxiety and fear responses, right? Like small things trigger you. You can get negative thought patterns and anxious thoughts and overthinking. You have increased rumination and worry and that creates a cycle of anxiety that's difficult to break. You have bigger perceived stress so everyday challenges seem more daunting and overwhelming. And you have an increased feeling of anxiety and helplessness. And also during social situations, it can lead to conflicts and have negative social experiences that contribute to increased anxiety. So by now you understood that sleeping well is crucial for regulating your hormones, overcoming your anxiety, releasing, um, reducing like the activity of your amygdala and all of that and regulating your emotions. So how do you actually like improve your sleep? how to sleep despite anxiety you have to understand this one formula suffering is pain plus resistance so you want to do something and in this case let, let's say the pain is anxiety and you like it's also giving you resistance because you can't fall asleep so the pain is the difficulty or the difficult discomfort we experience like sleeplessness and the resistance is our reaction to pain anxiety and frustration and resistance amplifies suffering creating a cycle of distress so we have to break like the cycle and sleep despite anxiety. Now you want to have a beginner's mind. You will just want to be open-minded and approach each night like for a new opportunity for sleep. Just be like happy that you were in your bed. It's it's a bit comfy. Like you might not feeling that good, but just acknowledge like the opportunity to actually fall asleep and have a bed and like be a bit grateful for having like a nice warm bed in a nice room and something like that. Just approach each night with like a good attitude and you want to let go of all of the past frustrations because I was laying in bed and I was like, I didn't sleep well last night. I didn't sleep well three years ago. I won't sleep well today. That was like the first shift that I had to make was just like, just like this is a new night, a new opportunity for me to fall asleep and I will treat it as such. You want to have non-striving, so you want to avoid forcing sleep. Because when you think about sleeping, you, you usually don't fall asleep. Like maybe you've tried this, I bet you've tried this. You try to force sleeping, basically. You're just like, in your head, you're saying, I will fall asleep, I will fall asleep, I will fall asleep. It doesn't work. You want to focus on recognizing genuine sleeplessness and allow sleep to happen naturally. Right? Just, let, just let go, just stop controlling it, just let your body do its thing. You want to have non-judging. So you want to understand that overcoming insomnia or negative thoughts at night or anxious thoughts at night or falling asleep despite anxiety takes time. For me, it took like 
I would say one and a half weeks to actually improve my sleep by doing the right things <clears throat> over and over again, which I will tell you in just a second. <clears throat> and you want to gradually implement the things that I'm about to tell you and the little adjustments, the tiny tweaks, like mindfulness practices and stuff like that, um, that will give you long-term benefits. You don't want to adopt everything that I tell you in this video at once. So literally just pick one thing and use it tonight. Now, here are a couple of practices that I use to sleep despite anxiety. The first one is the worry list, which is amazing, right? Because when I go to bed, I don't want to have any worries on my mind. So I try to solve every single big problem that I have that I can fix today, today, right? So if you have like a stressful work thing, assignment that you have to do, or you have to do a presentation, or you have to work on something meaningful, or you have to call your doctor or something like that, do it today if you can, because then you then you solve the problem, right? Anxiety is telling your body to act. So you need to use this energy, like this fight, fight, freeze response to act. And you, by acting, you solve the problem and then you can fall asleep better. Because usually what happens is when I wake, when I'm awake at night, trying to fall asleep, I'm just worrying about some stupid stuff. Like, oh man, I still have to do my driver's license. And oh, like school is starting again in four weeks. And you know, like my business, blah, 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 blah. And how can I help this one client? And I'm just overthinking everything. I just write everything down and I solve it. Just like, okay, you know, like I have a client here, he's struggling with, you know, like uh, sleep besides as anxiety, like falling asleep despite anxiety. What can I do about that? Okay, you know, like mm, I will create a routine for him. I will create a plan for him. I will call him um, at night and tell him exactly what to do. How can I help him? You know, like this is like productive overthinking, but you want to solve all of the problems during the day so you can sleep at night and don't worry about shit. Just write on sources of stress to externalize worries. Just write it down. And then you can pair each worry with potential solutions. And then you act on them. Okay? It's very simple, but it works wonders for me. You also want to have morning activities. So one of the best ways I could sleep despite anxiety was just making my morning extremely enjoyable and looking forward to the morning. Because then I was just like laying in bed at night thinking about what a great day I will have tomorrow. Like usually I'd wake up with a panic attack, but I try to avoid that and just think about all of the positive things. Like I can have a nice breakfast. I don't eat breakfast anymore, but these are the strategies that I used years ago. I have a nice breakfast. I can go to school tomorrow. Maybe something nice is happening. I meet up with that one girl. I can work on this one little thing that's, you know, nice. Or I'm calling this friend or I can, you know, like even simple things like when I used to play video games, just being happy about um, being able to play my video games or something like that. Just look forward to the day ahead, especially the morning. And then it's way easier for you to get out of bed and actually fall asleep because you don't think about all of the negative things that you've going on tomorrow. So like a brief exercise or like a cold shower, your favorite breakfast, a re uh, like meditation, a relaxing routine. Just look forward to something. And if you don't have anything, just create these small things that you can look forward to. This can literally be as small as eating your most favorite meal or you know, like taking a warm shower, if you like warm showers, I personally prefer cold showers or, you know, like listening to your favorite song in the morning. That is a big one. Just like put you wake up and you put on your most favorite song and you start like dancing or something like that. And you can also use non-sleep deep rest NSTR, which is a protocol that I've discovered by Andrew Huberman, who's like a neuroscientist, very famous guy, knows a lot. And it's basically similar to meditation and you just do like a body scan and you try to, like, it's really relaxing. And you try to control your sympathetic nervous system. You try to control and regulate, like, your, your body, which is amazing. You can do that before going to bed or during the day. And it's it's been proven by studies that it actually improves your sleep. So I just do that before I go to bed. I just scan my body. I relax. It's similar to meditation, but a bit better, in my opinion. So you can try that out. Just go onto Google or onto Spotify or onto YouTube and uh, type in NSTR meditation or something like that. And you can find and follow like a 15, 20 minute protocol. Now, how to improve your sleep. We talked about how to improve, how to fall asleep and sleep despite anxiety, but you also want to improve your sleep, right? Like if you fall asleep, you probably want to feel rested and you want to be able to make all like this process a bit easier. And you know, like sometimes you wake up in the morning and you did sleep, you did sleep like eight hours, but you still feel fatigued and not really rested and you still feel tired and we don't want that to happen like if you do fall asleep you want to feel rested in the morning so first of all you want to target your sleep window because we all have like a inner clock inside of us which is called like the circadian rhythm so you have a clock inside of you and that gets regulated by sunlight 
and you want to identify your optimal sleep window. So if you wake up around 8 a.m., aim to be in bed between 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. So it's like um, 13 to 14 hours before you wake up. So just look at when you wake up. If you wake up at 6, 14 hours later, that's when you should be sleeping. That's when you at least should go to bed. Because if you miss that window, um, you will struggle to fall asleep. Because you have like a hormone um, inside of your body that's like increasing, increasing over the day, making you sleepy and sleepy and sleepy. And when you miss that window, when you should go to bed, after that, you get even more energy. Right? Think about it. It makes it makes a lot of sense from like a evolutionary standpoint. Right? Like imagine you're like in a, living in a tribe and you have a bunch of guys around you and you have to like stay up at night to protect your tribe. And you miss that sleep window. And then at night you get a boost of energy. That is that is a good thing because you can defend your tribe against lions attacking you, against other tribes that try to like take your wife. <laughs> you know, like you, you get what I mean. So we still have this response inside of our body that when you miss your sleep window, you get an energy boost. That's why a lot of people get like an energy boost like 3 a.m. and they start to work out at 3 a.m. Because your body's like, okay, we didn't sleep, so I have to protect tribe. Basically, like this is simplified but you get my point so you want to stick to a consistent sleep schedule even on weekends and just look at when you're waking up right now and try to be asleep 13 to 14 hours after that and you want to avoid missing the window because create a wind down routine one to two hours before the bed to signal your body's it's time to sleep it's just like when you wake up at eight you know like at um 8 a.m just create like a little sleep ritual at 8 p.m so you can fall asleep at 9, 10 p.m. You want to signal to your brain, okay, the day is over. I've done all of the work, right? I can actually like rest and fall asleep. You can do that by basically interrupting your work, interrupting your normal like daily flow and creating a separate routine. So that can be like a heart reset, like a, like a warm shower or like a bath or like a meditation session. Something that's like, okay, a trigger for your body and mind that is signaling to your body and mind that it's time for sleep. Because I found out that when I'm working all day long, which I usually am, and I work until night, my brain is still hyperactive. So I need like one hour to calm down <clears throat> before I can actually fall asleep and signal to my brain, you know, like work is over. You don't have to work anymore, right? You can take care of the client tomorrow. You can record this video tomorrow. Sleep. I take a cold shower, which I do not recommend for most people because cold showers can actually uh, decrease your sleep ability. But for me, it works. Like you have to find out what works for you. Then I do some kind of meditation, I read, right? I have like a tea or something, something nice. And then I go into bed, I turn off the lights and I slowly fall asleep while reading or meditating. You want to accomplish tasks during the day because most people don't understand this. What you do during the day is also impacting your sleep. So regardless of the scale, you want to accomplish tasks during the day that make you feel um, productive. Because this, result is, this literally reduces cortisol levels. Cortisol is a, is a stress hormone inside of your body, also responsible for anxiety. So that allows your mind to shift into a more relaxed state, co um, conducive to sleep. So just solve problems during the day. And it doesn't have to be big. You don't have to attack like your biggest project at work or school or do this one presentation or work for 12 hours. No, you just want to do something during the day. So you reduce your stress hormone you reduce your cortisol inside of your body and you can finally sleep better at night and you also of course has of course you of course have to use energy during the day to be sleepy right so like moving your body is very good doing cognitive tests also very good because you're using calories you're using energy and then you can fall asleep better right it's kind of like you have 100 energy points when you wake up in the morning and during the day it gets drained and in the evening you should only have about like 5 10 maybe 20 energy points left. But if, it, if that's at like 70, 80, because you just did nothing during the day, of course you won't fall asleep. You have to use your body, exercise your body and um, use your mind. Now you want to have a dark and cold room. And if um, a, good, a good way to measure this is if you put your hand in front of your face and you can't see your hand, that's a good indicator for a dark room. So you just put your hand in front of your face like this in a dark room. And if you can't see it, then your room is dark enough. You want to have a cold room, preferably around 18 Celsius, because your body temperature is rising when you're sleeping. And when the room is too, too hot, you won't be able to fall asleep and you will actually wake up at night. So you want to have a, like a kind of cold room, 18, 18 Celsius. Now you can just open your window, 
it's a nice trick. Like during the summer, you can just open your window. You can use light blankets or no blankets at all. You can sleep just in underwear or whatever so you don't get too hot. No blue lights before one, one hour before bed, right? Because we spoke about this before. You have a circadian rhythm, like an inner body clock, and that gets regulated by light. So when you're viewing a lot of light in the evening, it's signaling to your brain that it's still daytime and then you can't fall asleep. And it's actually not producing melatonin and the hormones that you need to fall asleep. So you need to reduce the amount of light that you get into your eyes at night. This is crucial. This is one of the most important steps. So you can just put, if you have to use your phone, if you have to do some work, if you have to use your PC or TV, just turn it onto like a yellow screen mode. Like you can go into your phone settings and turn it onto like night mode or night shift or something like that. And then the screen gets yellow. So I, all of my screens turn yellow at 20 p.m. So I don't get this blue light into my eyes. And one hour before bed, you want to avoid artificial lights at all costs, basically. Just want to be in a dark room. Maybe if like a, like a very dim light, like a candlelight or like a very dim yellow light so you can read or relax or journal or write your worry list or whatever. But don't stare at like a bright fucking screen. It's stupid. You don't want to drink two hours before bed. Now, this is actually a hard rule for me to follow because I always have a dry mouth, so I drink a lot. So I just start sipping water two hours before the bed. So if I have like, like a water bottle, I only sip like tiny bits. And I avoid like drinking huge gallons of water because then I wake up at the night and have to piss and that's not nice. No food three hours before bed. That's like a general rule to go by. You want to have your meal, uh, like your dinner three hours before bed. 15 minutes of sunlight in the morning to set the circadian rhythm. Now this is super important. That's the first thing that I do when I wake up in the morning. I open my window and I just look outside for like 10, 15 minutes because that is signaling to my brain. Okay. You woke up at this time, we will set your body clock at this time, and you will wake up naturally at this time, right? I talked about the sleep window before. So <clears throat> when you view sun in the morning, it's just signaling to your brain that the day has started. It's time to like, you like basically get your body running. And when the, when the night goes away, when the light goes away at night, then it's signaling to your brain, okay, it's time to sleep. This makes a lot of sense. Right? It's just a view sunlight in the morning. It has a bunch of other benefits, um, which I can't even get into because there's so much. If you want to know more about that, just look at Andrew Huberman Sunlight. Just type that into YouTube, Andrew Huberman Sunlight, and you will find the huge benefits viewing sunlight in the morning has. Now, it's very important that you, you don't look directly into the sun. And it doesn't have to be, um, the, the, the sun doesn't have to be shining. You can literally just like look at um sunlight or just look at the clouds or just look outside and don't do it through a window viewing it through a window will take 50 times more time it is 50 times less effective than looking at it uh, without a window and no glasses or something like that like normal glasses are fine but no like sunglasses and no window so just look at nature look outside don't stare directly into the sun don't be stupid and it even works if the if the sun isn't shining if it's clouded if it's raining but then it will take a bit longer you want to avoid caffeine after 15 p.m. Now, I I love caffeine. I try to regulate it because um, caffeine can actually be very, very terrible for people that are struggling with anxiety because it's basically like if you're already anxious, it's just like putting gasoline onto the fire and exploding everything. So you want to avoid drinking caffeine or you want to avoid drinking coffee one and a half hours after waking up because when you wake up, um, the receptors inside of your brain that basically absorb the caffeine are not ready yet so i only drink coffee like one and a half to two hours after waking up so my brain can actually absorb it and i don't get this um, midnight cra uh, this midday crash now if you drink coffee first thing in the morning you will probably realize that you get really tired midday that is because you're drinking coffee too early so just delay that one and a half hours and two hours before waking uh, after waking up and now you have a caffeine half line so like 50 percent of the caffeine that you drink, that you absorb inside of your body, is still inside of your body six hours after you've consumed the coffee. So when you drink coffee at 15 p.m., you still have a lot, like 50% of the ca caffeine inside of your body at 21 o'clock at 9 p.m. and you want to fall asleep, which is terrible. So don't drink any coffee. Like, of course you can do whatever you want, but if you want to improve your sleep, I highly advise you to not drink any coffee after 15 p.m. 
uh, if you eat dinner, right, eat it three hours before going to bed and try to have a lot of protein and carbs. Okay. And you can also take magnesium supplements. So I take these magnesium supplements, just like very normal. They have, um, I take one of them a day in the evening because magnesium has been proven to make you sleepy and rest your muscles and make you relax. So there's just like magnesium in here, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B6, vitamin B12. That's it. So I just take normal vitamin supplements 30 minutes before going to bed um, to have like the real effect. And then my muscles relax a bit. Like I don't really feel it, but maybe it's a placebo effect, but it just helps me calm down a bit. Or at least I think that it helps me calm down a bit. Okay. So these are the strategies that I highly advise you to use. How to stick to your routine. Consistency in sleep is more important than the duration. Like think about that. Consistency is more important than the amount of time that you sleep. If you wake up at 10 and then you wake up at 7 and then you wake up at 13 o'clock and then you go to bed at 11 and then you go to bed, you go to bed at 3 a.m., it's messing with your inner body clock. So you won't have a consistent sleep schedule, even on weekends, even on holidays. Wake up and go to bed at the same time every single day. You can, again, create a night ritual that prepares your body and mind for sleep. So just have, like, again, a heart reset. Take, take a um, warm shower, take a bath, breathe, meditate, dim the lights, have like a, like a night ritual. Avoid stimulants and heavy meals. Avoid nicotine at light, so smoking or vaping. Avoid alcohol. Alcohol is actually, like a lot of people say that alcohol makes people sleep better. Or they can fall asleep faster. Yes, you can fall asleep faster, but the sleep quality that you have is way, way, way worse. If you don't believe me, look up Andrew Huberman's sleep podcast. And... Um, you also want to avoid heavy meals, like right before bed. Like don't eat ice cream, so your blood sugar levels spike. Don't eat um, a lot of like uh, unsaturated, unsaturated fats. Don't eat a lot of processed food. Like just eat what's good for you. You know what's good for you. And also avoid alcohol, nicotine, caffeine. You want to limit naps. I never napped in my life, but for some reason, some people like it. Like my dad is napping, my mom is napping, my grandparents were, na were napping, so everyone around me is napping, but I never napped, because when I wake up after a nap, I just feel groggy, and I just feel shit, so I don't nap, but you want to limit naps, because then you can actually sleep better at night, like it makes sense, right? You want to have a regular exercise, so exercising is of course going to help if you're trying to stick to your routine, right? Like, I don't have to get into the exercise benefits, um, I actually made a video on that yesterday, which probably comes out came out yesterday so you can watch that if you're interested and you just want to eat clean they're just operating like a normal human being like these are the fundamentals right eating clean exercising sleeping right and um, getting sunlight into your eyes and doing like some kind of mindfulness shadow work or something like that so if you need help applying the strategies you can click on the first link in the description to book a free call with me and I will help you reduce your generalized anxiety disorder within 13 days and I will coach you daily. You will get access to a community of like-minded individuals and over seven courses, including my systemized anxiety relief, so we can actually overcome your anxiety. Thanks for watching and please take action.